All right, we're live. Say hello, Bobby. Hello, everybody. Thanks for having me, Alex. Thanks for having me, Bobby. Yeah. Appreciate it. We've been talking a lot off camera. Yep. Having a good time. Yeah. Um, all right, guys. Good afternoon. Oh, I can't. I got to be careful. The camera's on the table today. <laughs> good afternoon, everybody. My name's Alex Vidal. I'm president of Related ISG International Realty and host of the show you're watching today, episode number 70. Can't believe wow. it. I wow. always say this started off as a small project, and here we are, 70 episodes in. Today we're joined by Bobby Castro. If there's ever a success story that's out there, this is one. He may not be very well known. I'm very fortunate to get him on before he blows up and then nobody's gonna be able to get him on. <laughs> Though with his personality, I think a lot of people are gonna join. Bobby, you ready? Thank you, dude. Right, I appreciate that, man, I appreciate it. All right, so what I read was, you you have a ninth grade education, right? But then you went up to owning a $300 million portfolio of apartments, net worth of $300 million. Ninth grade education, Multi, yeah. multi, multi millionaire. Tell us a little bit about that path. Too. Amazing. You know, I, I've never really, you know, until now, exiting from uh, my third slice of my business, just happened two months ago for a billion dollar valuation. Yeah. And now playing around with a lot of, you know, activity in the world, I'm starting to realize and more so very grateful and appreciated to my mom. And um, I actually was held back in the third grade. I was not good in school. I was, it was challenged. Challenge means I couldn't digest the information. And I think I used to frustrate teachers and I was getting frustrated too. And after the ninth grade, um, in Hylia Junior High, um, I decided to leave. Hylia Junior High. Hylia Junior High, yeah. I was born in the Bronx. Uh, my dad's Puerto Rican, my mother's Irish and Jewish. And then we uh, grew up in Miami, in Hialeah. Uh, my dad was a postman. A lot of children. Before he met my mom, he had 11 or 12 of them. He was 50 when he had me. Jesus Christ. My mother was 27. So uh, I don't know what my mother was doing, but uh, thank God uh, they did connect and uh, amazing. My father passed away at 94. My mother will be 80 years old this uh, December the 16th. Really? So it was a lot of challenges, Alex. Um, you know, we grew up on Rena Center. This is where you uh, rent a lamp, a yeah. bed for the week. And my mom, a waitress, before Denny's, it used to be called Sambo's. And then she worked at Pasquale's uh, Italian restaurant, yeah. Red Road, next to the dog track on 57th Avenue. And then the Roni Pub on the beach, three jobs. Um, my dad was very passive, very kind, beautiful. I think he was more into um, the business of ladies. Um, the 12 kids. Yeah, yeah so, uh, and, but beautiful man. He was a great father. Um, they stayed married. I don't think they were kind of happy together. My mom lived on the couch my entire life until really? You know, as an adult, I parted ways and my dad upstairs. Uh, so my dad was, you know, a beautiful person, but more nine to five. My mom was the pusher. And what's crazy, I was very shy. I really didn't speak until I was about seven years old. Um, and I think now thinking about it and reflecting, I just came back from a, a life retreat with Richard Branson and it was all about self-reflection growing. And I think during that time, maybe, and I could be wrong, during that time, I was probably maybe doing more listening and seeing all this chaos was going on. You know, there was a lot sure. of chaos in my, my family and my mother uh, held it together, but um, it was very tough for her, very yeah. tough. So how did you, what, what, what was that spark for you? Like, you, you know, you, you be obviously became a very successful entrepreneur. What was it, like, what was that, that, that spark for you to get to where you are? You know, with, with full transparency, um, we lived in a townhouse in Hialeah. And it was rough. I see the emotion in your eyes. It, it was rough. A yeah. um, uh, lot of fleas, you know, fleas that go yeah. on dogs. Um, I, you know, it, that's such a deep situation where I was very hungry and I wanted something different. I wanted a different life. And because my mom was a waitress, I migrated to become a busboy, then a waiter, then a valet parker. And during that time, what happens, you pick up people skills. And my mother told me, taught me how to leverage, as well as my brother Eric, we're only 18 months apart. And my mom taught me how to leverage a check if you're a waitress or a waiter. So if a customer asks you, well, you know, what's good today, Casey? She's gonna recommend the most expensive item on the, sure. the menu to upsell the situation because she gets 18% if she performs and does a great job and they have a great experience. And seeing that, help me pick up some people skills. And when you have people skills, you tend to listen. And what you do with that information is the game changer. And I think that helped me looking back. I'm, I'm now trying to figure it out myself, yeah. but 
you know, uh, I think that has something to do with it. And we're going to talk about people skills in a minute because in our business, and you're probably starting to see it now, technology is really starting yes, to yes, seep in. Crazy. And how do you balance the, yeah. the but I want to save that for a little, good, bit, good, a little good. bit going back. Now, I, I know we talked a little bit about, I know you mentioned Brad Lee the other day. I was talking to him on my way here. I've had Brad Lee on the show. I flew out wow. to Vegas, had him on. And he had a quote that I love that said, didn't matter how many people don't believe in you, as long as you're not one of them. Yeah. Love that quote. Actually, he's got a, quite a few quotes that I love. Talk to me about how important mindset has played in your life. Um, well, let's go actually to the actual question. Talk to us about how important mindset is to you and what systems you have in place to stay in that positive, yeah. motivated mindset. Because you got a lot of energy, man. Yeah, yeah, I, I do, man. Um, I don't, I'm not a good sleeper. Um, I'm maybe too much for most. Um, you know, I, I think maybe many people probably think I do a narcotics or drugs or some sort of upper. It's not. The upper is life. And, um, you know, I stay focused because there's something that I trademarked. It's called non-refundable minutes. Okay. And I started teaching myself after making a lot of mistakes and trying not to repeat those mistakes, I started valuing my time. And when you start valuing your minutes, because once you spend the minute, like we're exchanging value, you can't get it back. So the whole effort is take advantage of what the situation is. And I think I took advantage of every situation and leveraged it, pivoted. Um, and I, I'm really good on digesting information. I can process it, even though I was not good in school at all. Um, but I can act upon it, and so I don't get distracted. The, the, okay. the short answer, I do not get distracted. It's all about today, not yesterday, not next month, not quarter end, not year end. I treat today as if it was month end. Today, I put Every it all in. Month end. And, and what I want to tell a lot of listeners and, and people that have been well, contacting yeah, me. Yeah, because one of my questions is how do you implement yeah. the, how do you implement the non-refundable minutes? You know, it's so, it's so crazy because a lot of people look at the material things, all these, these, these beautiful young people, and they're, they're processing that, but they're not processing the true fact of success. It, it's not about the success, Alex. It's about the value you give. If you give value each and every day on anything you do, little by little, every day, just keep those small efforts. They compound in long periods of time, almost like what we talked about multifamily. That's yeah. why I love multifamily. It just compounds to wealth. And it, it doesn't have to be a financial situation. It could be global life success, I sure. call it. Uh, I'll be married 29 years, dude. 29 years this yeah. October, she's October 6th. She's behind the camera in great shape, or she was Amazing. behind the camera. And, and, and I learned from my marriage in the beginning because we got married young. I met Sophie 18. Uh, we went right out of the gate. We had our beautiful uh, daughter, uh, uh, not on purpose, uh, mistake. Yeah. And it was a rough patch for me, you know, and I made a lot of mistakes. So how, so how old were you when you had your daughter? I was 22 or 23. Oh, I had my son at 19. Yeah, dude. And, and Well, yeah. And Sophie was 19. And, um, you know, so it's amazing. So I'm very blessed, yeah. very grateful to have Sophie in my life. Uh, I think Sophie picked me. I didn't pick her. Yeah. So how, how, how did PMA, because that's, that's what I wanted to talk yeah. about as well, the, the positive mental attitude. How did that come into your life as well? So we're real big on that. It's also another trademark item I have. And at Bankers Healthcare Group, the company I just exited from, it, it's, it, it's, in, it's plugged into the DNA and the culture of that company. And when you really focus on this layer, which the, the majority of your population live, if, if, if you're a business owner, sure. a lot of business owners, they get lost in the world up here. And they're expecting their leaders below them to cascade down. They're not gonna cascade down unless you're cascading, showing, leading by example, so positive mental attitude is something that I had to force myself to be positive to come out of the struggle that um, my mother worked her tail off and, and try to do such a good job not to make it appear like it was a struggle. Sure. And I, I just had to constantly stay positive. I had an uncle, Uncle Barry passed away a couple uh, years ago and he was a realtor, insurance broker, wasn't good at any of them. But he used to tell me, Bobby, PMA. PMA, PMA, and it just stuck with me, and I practiced it, and it's it, it, to the extreme that um, you go to any of my vehicles, it says PMA. If you go to my granddaughter, who's only three and a half years old, Alex, what does PMA stand for? Positive, mental attitude. Now, she doesn't understand it, sure. but slowly you'll be surprised. Routines, habits, and these patterns, right. especially in this technology world, it's very important for us parents and grandparents to really um, be on high alert about technology. 
It's great, but it's scary. Well, and the, I, I love the positive mental attitude because I'm of the opinion that you could be the best salesman, the best closer, the best person to sign a contract, but if you don't want to get out of bed in the morning, yeah, none of it matters, right? And I, yeah, so. and real quick, if I could touch no, on that, to tell my entire company, and I, I send out an email every morning to each and every one of them, including my grandkids, my children, my wife. They get an email every morning uh, about this. So say, for example, you come to work today, you're a VP, you're in sales, you have some sort of accountability and responsibility to your family to, co to go earn. But what about the day before if uh, a family member was ill, or maybe you had an argument, or maybe you're just grumpy? All these things that we're exposed to, I'm exposed to every single day, hits you and stays with you. If you don't reset every morning, I wake up at five in the morning, not by an alarm clock, by just pure desire to wake up, I work on myself an hour and a half. Now I consider myself really high on the RPMs when it comes to PMA. And I, if I don't work on myself, I can fall victim to living in that distraction of yesterday's okay. situation. So how do you, just, and this is not even on here, so how do you, what are some, give us some examples of things that you do. I'll give you one example, and, and it was a good question that somebody asked me. Bobby, you keep talking about surround yourself with success, surround yourself with better people, surround yourself. With, I'm not saying no one is not better because we all have qualities. That's what's great about each of us. We have our own unique quality. Surround yourself with new information. So everyone lives within the information they know and they expect different results from it. I started following these patterns as a busboy, a waiter, Valley Parker, just, just modeling these people. And I figured it out and I think I do have it right where it, it, you, you can actually pick up so, so much from actually re, re, resetting your day to the point where every day is a new day. Today I got so much value out of my day. I woke up today at 5 a.m. I got so, so much. I work an hour and a half. And getting back to the question, what do you do, Bobby? How do I surround it? Everyone I know is broke. I grew up like you grew up. I don't know anyone. Who did you meet? Why well, didn't meet nobody? I had a cassette back in the day. I had family members that joined Amway, okay. and they all had cassettes of Les Brown, all these beautiful people sure. saying beautiful things. Oh, I was Les not, Brown was way yeah. And I was never uh, successful in Amway. I did join Amway too, like a lot of people have, looking for something better. But I picked up on some positive people looking for more. So my message to a lot of young people now, Bobby, where do I find it? Get on YouTube, get on the internet, get off of all the other distractions, limit your friends, just having friends alone, Alex, that's like having a full-time company. Yeah. It's a lot of stuff to manage. And just get on the, you know, there's so much free information today with technology, swim in it. Swim in good information if you don't know anybody who has success or maybe a mentor or someone you can model. Yeah. So this internet. Are you gonna write a book? I'm actually in the process too. Uh, I, I, my farewell letter to all my beautiful coworkers at BHG, I, I was so emotional, dude. I, I didn't even, I, I actually exited from the back door and I did it slowly two months, three months before mm -hmm. because I wanted, I knew I was gonna have a hard time with this. And then I finally wrote them all beautiful emails saying how much they have impacted my life so much, um, how um, all, everything from my heart. So my non-refundable minutes. So it's gonna be 15 chapters. I'm trying to bring it down, but I wanna focus on teaching people how to you know, what is their worth for a minute? Sure. A lot of people can't answer that question. Interesting. No, you, I, you, absolutely. You, you need to write a book, man. I'm sitting here like, I don't even <laughs> want to go to the next question because I'm trying to, uh, I'm working on being present in the moment. And even though I'm the host, I, I, one of the reasons I do the show is I get to learn so much. So I'm sitting here trying to absorb it all. Now, I remember when I was like 19, 20, I heard an AIG commercial that said the biggest risk you can take is never taking yeah. it. What's the biggest risk that you took, you think, throughout your career? And how did you convince yourself to actually take that risk? Awesome, another great question. I, I love this podcast. Um, I was maybe 17, going on 17. My mother was renting this house from a beautiful couple. I'll never forget, he was a pilot. They just loved my mom. They just knew how hard mm -hmm. she worked. Finally, they said, listen, Casey, we wanna sell you this home. And my mom had bad credit multiple of times. Every seven years, it goes resets sure. the bad credit. They did her a rent, rent to own situation. They put a little bit away. So a few years later, she was able to get a mortgage with proof of payments and the whole process. She mm -hmm. wind up getting a mortgage and just knocking mm -hmm. on 17 years old, I said, mom, I want to mortgage the house. And back then it was not called a HELOC, it was a second mortgage. Yeah. And I'll never forget his name, Woody. I got the flyer, back then there was no internet, Alex. I got the flyer, you remember the flyer? Yeah. And brokers all over. I think it's still around. Is it? Yeah, probably. Um, 
And uh, I contacted a mortgage broker that would really give me some time on the phone, some sure. kid calling. And he says, it looks like this thing can work. Convince your parents. I went, I told my mom, my mom, without any hesitation, just like when I said after ninth grade, I wanted to leave. She said, yes. She seen something in me that I didn't see. Um, and you know what? When I start doing some podcasts, I, she's probably going to be my first uh, interview. That's a great That'd question awesome. for my mom. You know, what did she see? And so we did $25,000, maxed it all the way up. Sure. God knows what the LTV was. We took the 20, I took the 25000 I wanted to be in the cleaning business, janitorial cleaning, because we were so good at it. Me, me and you know, my brothers, yeah. Eric and Kevin, because my mom worked so much, we cleaned all the house. We ironed her apron. I mean, we're the best cleaners. So it's something I already knew, and I knew I was going to be good at it. But my age prevented a lot of accounts being open. I went to 36th Street in Miami, okay. next to Miami Highlight. I don't know if it's still there. Pink Pussycat. Okay. Went in there in the afternoon. Bunch of dudes with cigars. I don't know, remember it, but I can just imagine it. Yeah. And they said, sure, clean this place. And I, <laughs> oh, so I, yeah, I started cleaning. With a hazmat yeah. suit on. <laughs> I started cleaning uh, six in the morning. Um, and then I, I picked up really quick that the, the, the adult centers, not so much the adult entertainment, but any late night yeah. establishment, these, these were pretty cool people that they didn't overthink it and just say they thought it was a kick, they got a kick out of it, I guess. And I started building some accounts, not a lot, just building some accounts. And then one day, a dancer, and I was with my father, my father would go with me at six in the morning, and um, one of the dancers says, how old is this kid? How, this kid, I mean, what grade is this kid in? I, yeah. Some comment to that, and that was the end of that situation, and I gave up. Instead of just finding another way, not an excuse, I didn't understand, you know, um, and I sold it to a beautiful Cuban family, probably maybe 10 cents on the dollar, the van, the, the shampooer, sure. cleaning supplies, I bought them all in Medley. And then from there, uh, just get back in the hospitality, way, busboy this and that, and then some magic happened in my life, and I'm missing a lot of challenges, of course. Sure. But fast track it, I was a waiter at Rusty Pelican, Key yeah, Biscayne. Of and during the day, I was selling memberships for the Better Business Bureau, calling business owners, saying, hey, the value of a membership, would you be interested, blah, blah, blah. And at the same time, I was getting business opportunities. Again, going back to the classifieds. I was a classified junkie, just looking for opportunities. Information again. Yeah. And this was just me. No, I, just, I would just had this desire to get out of the struggle and then of course and there it all lies yeah the desire to get out of the and, and the mix of the hospitality seeing those guys on the golf course Don Shula he was such a gentleman to my mother my he my, my mother's call party was Don Shula when he came in at Don Shula Steakhouse it had to be Casey he was so nice to me my mom um, and I just looked at these folks and you once in a while run into somebody who's kind of negative and rough and tough I, I, I didn't pay attention to them. I just looked at the, these other individuals. And so when you mix the struggle and you mix with some good quality, you, you get a beautiful shake. So talking about quality, you've been in sales all your life. Yes. What would you say are the common denominators among the most successful salespeople yeah. that you've encountered? I've, I've literally have earned millions, probably tens of millions of dollars on this one pattern. And there's three phases in, um, and I just posted it on my Instagram, the three phases of a sale. And the first phase, you have to, number one, listen. The less you talk is, is, is the biggest win because the customer is gonna tell you their frustrations, their wants, their needs, but more, more importantly, their time. How much time are you dealing with on this particular sales call or sales visit? So I, I started realizing that the more you listen, the more this customer is telling you mm -hmm. their situation because any customer, I don't care how much they want a product, Every, every customer is on high alert. They feel very uncomfortable. Sure. Nobody likes to be sold something. So you're wasting so much valuable minutes by trying to go right out of the gate to try to close a sale because you're dealing with an individual that has behavior that's very uncomfortable. It's, no one wants to yeah. be in that position. So I learned how these three stages work. So listening, less talking, let them talk even further. When you think they're finished talking, you'll be so surprised there's a second half to that talk. Oh, yeah. And that's where the sale starts. When they're done with it, the sale process takes place. So you have to be liked. And how you be liked is just really listen because customers are, 
Yeah, they're frustrated too, and, yeah. and they, they, they like to talk, and your job is to listen. Yeah. It's so funny you say that. I said, we were talking off camera, and I was saying, you know, there's 65,000 realtors in Data Broward County. That's why I started the show. How can I convey the energy, the, the culture, the passion that leads our brokerage? And at the end of the day, if there are 65,000 realtors in Dayton, Broward County, customers have a choice of whom they want to work. Yeah. What a great way to convey to the customer your likability, your personality, your energy, your vibe, because they're going to want to work everything. with somebody. It's like. everything. And, and answer the question and move on. Don't stay with the question yeah. because more questions are going to come if you do so. That's right. Or follow up the question. With your, yeah. The answer will clarify it. Get more information because yeah. all they're doing is giving you information to later yeah, handle the objection. Yeah, I'm, I'm, you'll hear me over and over talk about information yeah. and it's, it's, it's the most valuable resource. Got it. All right, so this is episode 70. Um, I've had some really successful people like you on the show, and I think, maybe not right, maybe I'll do this again at 100, but I think I've narrowed down pretty much the five common, denomin five common denominators among the super successful. I wanna kinda touch upon those with you, see okay. how they impacted in your life, cool? Cool. All right, big one, they dream so big it's crazy. So what would you say was the biggest dream you had throughout your professional career so far? That when, if you were to talk to me or somebody behind us, and you said, this is my dream, they'd be like, Bob, you're freaking yeah, nuts. Yeah. Uh, one million dollars in the bank. That was the biggest one you were great. That, that was, was that was, um, wow. Man, I was young, I couldn't answer the question. I, I was young, but I was okay. so fixated on it. And then when I was able to, you know, uh, be so blessed to hit it, I went to five. And then I went here, it's and then funny, I started. I actually, have a question, I actually have a question about that in a minute. So the biggest, the biggest goal, dream big, was a million dollars in the bank. What about throughout your career? How did you how did you handle who you would take advice from? Yeah. Because you know, there's a lot of people that want to offer it. How did you know to listen to this person but not listen to this person? Yeah. So I'm I'm, I'm obsessed about information. I list, I read uh, a, a lot about rags or riches. Um, I too go on the internet and get information, and I look at someone or people that have bona fide results from a struggle, not from a hand-me-down. Not not to say that's no, no, anything sure. wrong, as long as that those individuals maximize Correct. what mom and dad um, built. Yeah. So I, I like to listen to um, some massive success, you know, and you know, I, I, and 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 I the last eight months I've been exposed to that some incredible stories where. If you think my story is great, this is unbelievable, these people, okay. and um, just massive quality of okay. success stories. What about mentors along the way? Uh, Richard Branson. I was really? always a big uh, fan of Richard because what you see is what you get. He's kind. Um, he, he, if you study him, he has this uh, mindset of give, you'll receive. Give. So what that means, how I understand it in my own way, because we all understand different sure. information differently, give, give value, receive value. That builds to a tremendous value. Um, so Richard Branson, uh, without a doubt, he, he wasn't great in school. Um, and even more so that I was able to be with him personally and spend some good quality of time, without a doubt, because he was just different. He was Got just... It. And kind. Yeah, for sure. And kind makes goes a long way, right? For me, it does. For me as well. It's, it's, it's an energy thing. You yeah. know, I was like, hey, this guy's really cool. I can spend a lot of time with him. Talk to me about breakthrough moment. I, I, one thing I've learned is the breakthrough, it's like that iceberg. You see the tip, but under the water, there's a lot. What was that breakthrough moment for you in your career? Yeah, that, so. That was the culmination of the, the work for you. You know, when we, when we sold the first slice, um, I sold 10% of the company uh, in 2015 or 16. I'm not sure. Uh, based on a $250 million valuation. So that's, and it was all cash. So $25 million hit my account. And believe it or not, I wasn't, I didn't have the wow factor. I really didn't have the wow factor. And I don't know why, because that's a lot of money, more money than I've ever had. Then 11 months to a year later, we sold to the same buyer another 19%, which 6% and changed my part based on a $600 million valuation. And that goes back to information. We knew about the, wow, they bought it on 250 based on this information. Why don't we put more fuel on that information? Go from 250 to 600 in a year. Then three years later or so, um, I always wanted to do something with a B, a billion dollars. Uh, I exited my last 17% based on a billion dollar valuation, as I mentioned two months ago. And the wow factor did hit me when the wire transfer went through um, and I'm not gonna lie to you, I wasn't jumping up and down. 
I, I wasn't proud of myself. Um, I paid attention to it. Yeah. Um, I'm starting now to be very grateful and more so my mom is coming to me more than ever. I'm not one of these, 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 these awesome dudes that pick up their mom on Wednesday, take her to church on Sunday. It's never been me and I feel bad about that. And I've been thinking about that more and more because I've been interviewed so much and it's always going back to my mother. Yeah. And I really need to, um, you know, talk about non-refutable minutes. I need to start practicing that more with my mom. You know, who talks about that a lot is uh, Jesse Itzler. I don't know if you know who Jesse Itzler is. Found Was he the book, the yeah, living the, with the Navy Seals and the monk? David Goggins and the monk yes. and Zico Coconut Water. He talks not 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 non-refundable minutes, but he talks a lot about his parents and how much time he has left with them and, and all that. So be a good yeah, guy for, yeah. for you to connect thank with. Thank you, thank you. What about believing in yourself? One of the things I've realized is they all had self-doubt. I had self-doubt the other day. No lie, I put on Two Life Crew. And I got <laughs> out <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it. Just, it is what it is. How, how did you handle those moments of the self-doubt? Did you ever have self-doubt as you were going through your process? Yeah, many times. Uh, it take me probably days. Uh, yes, got it. A, a lot. And it built up to the point where I am very confident. I invest in myself. Um, I depend on myself to cascade down so I can build scale. Um, I, I'm really confident when it comes to my decisions. I do not overthink because if you overthink, you're never going to make a decision. Um, I never had a business plan, Alex. Never had a business plan. Um, nor I will never because I just don't know how to get one or do one. So that's out of the window. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm really confident now in a, in a good way. And, and I'm, I've been so blessed to be surrounded by 550 employees at Bankers Healthcare Group. Uh, I love each and every one of them so much. My best part of the company was there was always an email blast to everyone when the new baby was born. And I always looked at it and I used to tell my coworkers, we're growing, we're yeah. growing. That's awesome, that's yeah. great. All right, I have a staple in the Closer Club. We call okay. it the lightning round. One word, very short answers, and then we'll wrap up with a book recommendation. One daily habit to change your life for the better. Uh, associate with less friends. Interesting, I, I agree with that. Energy providers. Energy. Not to say they're bad. They're no, somebody they're, they're, you know, but a friend is a big word. That's right. There's, well, there's there's two types of people, right? Yeah. Energy providers and energy drainers. Energy drainers. Yeah. I had a few before getting here, and I'm just like, man, I, you, you got to get away from those people. They just they, they suck you down. Harder to make your first million or or one to ten million. Uh, the first million by far. Um, it was very very hard um, because uh, I didn't know what to do with the information. It was hard, dude. Yeah. All right. True or false, no matter how much tech gets involved in our life, people skills will always be a main skill set to have. People skills is an absolute requirement. Um, uh, ignore it, you'll stay stuck. There you go. Something we'd be surprised to know about you. Uh, I'm a loner. Really? With 550 employees, I'm got a a huge, we got five people behind the camera here. You're a loner. I'm a loner. Uh, there's a lot of times I spend by myself and I'm just digesting information, um, not because I don't like to socialize. I, 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 you know, I like some loan time because I get value from it. Um, and now I'm on this 100 year legacy where I want my family to have core values and, and somewhere within 100 years when I'm long gone from this earth, I want someone to say, Papa Bobby started all this. So I, I've been drilling down on that a lot. Um, my wife is opposite. She's your typical Latina, she's Cuban. Uh, she, you know, yeah, so am I, baby. And, and so she, she, her, and um, you're kind of Cuban by default, dude. You're in Hialeah, yeah, and Puerto Rican, <laughs> so I'm right around the corner. So I just like, um, you know, I'm kind of shy, believe it or not, alone. I just like loan time. I get, I get some value because, um, not to say people drain me. Yeah. Um, I, I'd rather give myself some attention versus sure, absolutely. You know, Last question. I, I, I always start with the guest story, the guest backstory, yep. and then a, I always end it with a book, podcast, or TED Talk recommendation for the audience. A TED Talk. You know what? Uh, I'm going to be on a podcast. His name is uh, Nick Nitro Clark. You remember the Gladiators? Yeah. Amazing. Uh, so he invited me to be on his podcast, okay. and, and I'm very sensitive on who I'm, uh, I'm because I want to make sure it's a bona fide podcast. They have value for their viewers. Very important for me. And I and I did my research on Nick, and I seen his TED Talk. He had over 500, half a million viewers, and look him up and he has something special that everyone should listen to when he was in a dark moment in his life 
Uh, so Nick Nitro, like Nitro, yeah. when he was, I was an he NFL player. There, yeah. yeah, so he was. Oh, no, uh, I, I can't remember. Dude, there were a couple of guys. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he just that that's something just recently just hit in my head because sure. I you know I just spoke to him the other day and and I was touched. All right, there you go, Bobby. I'm I'm sad we're wrapping this up, dude. I man, just, we're, we're gonna keep talking. Yes, camera, you better believe it, man. This has been absolutely awesome. Thank just, you, guys. You you uh, you sucked me in with your wisdom and your energy. Any, uh, I'm gonna go around and turn off the camera. Any parting words for the audience? Um, you know, don't fall victim, guys, to distractions. Distractions are maybe individuals that are consuming some of your time, and you're 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 spending so much time managing that information. Uh, you're better off. Uh, upgrade into new information um, and that's the only way you're going to grow and I wish everybody nothing but health global success um, value your time those minutes are non-refundable thank you there you go thanks Bobby